Like with the other What If reviews, this video does contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen the episode yet, come back after you've checked out the episode and let's discuss. And just a reminder, these videos are made possible by my supporters on this platform, so if you do want to support me, be sure to hit that big beautiful subscribe button and be sure to check out the patron link in the description below so what if episode 7 is here what if thor were an only child now i'm kind of noticing that there are two types of what if episode at this point there are the episodes where it actually plays out like something that could have happened in the core mcu if circumstance had just been a little different and then I guess there are more stylized episodes like this one and episode two. And I think that's something that's kind of started to settle in, so I think I'm going to give episode two a rewatch at something just to make sure I'm being fair on it. But I'm going to say this right now. I would much rather every episode have the attention to detail of something like uh, what if Killmonger saved Tony Stark or what if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands. I guess these more silly sort of it's a cartoon episode where it's just fully sandbox just playing around with the characters are kind of more the filler episodes but it's kind of interesting that we have filler episodes of what is ultimately a filler show like this as far as we know right now won't amount to anything in the greater MCU movies or TV show canon. So when I first heard that there was going to be an episode dedicated to a party Thor I was dreading it. I was completely dreading it. It gave me flashbacks to the Toy Story shorts, which are for the most part pretty good, but there was one called Partysaurus Rex, and it wasn't that I hated it, but I was just like, Phew. okay, that's definitely the weakest link here. Where rather than having a story or actually spending time with the characters, we just see like a side character or something partying it up and stuff, and like, it can be fun, but I don't think it can carry an entire short. In this case, I'm pleasantly surprised that wasn't the entire thing. They did still try and have some semblance of MCU logic in here and actually spend time with these characters. But my problems with this episode are this. It's again the framing device of the Watcher. Now I'm not going to go into how he makes these episodes too long and doesn't do anything. But like, especially in these more fillery episodes, I feel like the more he kind of tries to justify these setups and how these things could have actually happened, the less I buy it, and I feel like these fillery episodes, such as this episode and the What If T'Challa Became a Star-Lord episode, would benefit so much from just not having him there and just treating it as this completely out-of-realm thing. But like, okay, I'm gonna choose to give it the benefit of the doubt now, and again, like I've said, I'm gonna go back and revisit episode 2 with this retroactively in mind and kind of talk about whether or not that changes my views on it or anything, but like, I'm just gonna treat it as this completely out of canon thing. So my problem with the framing of this episode is I'm just not entirely convinced by it. Like, okay, so they say that the reason why Thor got on the straight and narrow, why he turned out the way he did, was because uh, Loki was his stepbrother and, you know, having that god of mischief around kind of balanced him himself out and taught him a lot of responsibility, as Loki was kind of like his cautionary tale in a way. But in this universe, Odin never adopted Loki. So without that, Thor just went on to be completely wayward and a guy that's more interested in partying than he is in the responsibility of being king, being a hero and all that. But I still feel as though this idea could have been fleshed out a bit more and once again it suffers from just being contained to a 30 minute long episode. I would love to see Thor actually growing up without Loki. I, I would love to see what his life is like on Asgard without Loki there. But that's all covered by narration and I'm just like okay so why exactly, you know? Because his parents seem to want to keep him on the straight and narrow. You mean to tell me that Odin wouldn't be able to keep Thor on that path? Odin's a complete dickhead. Like, I'm pretty sure he would spank Thor into next Thursday. I feel like a better catalyst for this would have been that Thor doesn't, you know, want the life that Odin wants for him, and he wants to reject that entirely and run away from home, and then you could have, like, Odin and Frigga on the hunt for him. I think that would be a better setup overall. Then there is where this kind of suffers from the episode 2 problem, where it's like, okay, you've given a justification as to why Thor acts differently in this episode. He's gone down a different path but then there's lots of different characters that show up in this story. And even down to like cameos of characters from like the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. And it's this great little, you know, party of all of the different cosmic characters of the MCU. And I, I do like that and I like that the cameos are here, but I don't buy that these characters would go along with it. I don't buy that Nebula would be going along with this party. I don't buy that Jane Foster would fall in love with this version of Thor and that she'd go along with all of the partying. 
like Jane in this episode is acting much more like a wayward teenage girl. And I, I guess you could say that maybe Thor arrived here earlier because of his reason for arriving. But like that's not really explained. And I think it's another case of these MCU premises suffering under a 20 minute runtime. Outside of that though, I did have fun with this episode. You surprised? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I prefer the darker, more serious episodes. I prefer where, you know, it actually feels like a convincing scenario that could have happened in our own MCU. But I, I enjoyed it. It was an enjoyable piece of media. I liked seeing Captain Marvel versus Thor, how they recruit her at S.H.I.E.L.D. I loved seeing Thor and Captain Marvel punching each other across the different continents. I loved the different cameos from the different cosmic MCU characters. I can't help but wonder though, especially with characters like Korg, how did they, how did they get here? You know, and how did they know that this was going on? But again, I don't think the episode is interested in really thinking too hard about that, so I guess I'll just give it the benefit of the doubt and treat it as just a bit of standalone TV. But I think if they're going to try and fold this into a bigger storyline, which the ending leads me to believe they might be, that's where kind of my issues come with it. Like, I, I feel like the, the what-if premise just kind of refuses to admit where filler episodes are filler episodes and wants everything to hold relevance even where it's completely at odds with everything else and that's where i feel like the whole premise of this what if show and how they've tried to frame it as these are things that could have actually happened with these characters in other dimensions and stuff doesn't really work or add up i think truth be told I am overthinking it, but I'm kind of trying to play devil's advocate here. I'm trying to kind of look at the show on the terms that it sets out. And I think on the terms that What If sets out, it doesn't entirely work. Even if each episode is this entertaining little short story. The logic that they've tried to apply to this with The Watcher and saying that these things actually happened in other worlds just doesn't work for me. Because particularly in episodes like this, I'm just not convinced. And again, the show just suffers from having way too short of a runtime. I had fun with what was here. And I really like the fact that Captain Marvel, even in the end, covered up for Thor. That was like one of the best Captain Marvel character moments we've had in the entire MCU so far. What is otherwise kind of, kind of I guess a work in progress character that we don't know that much about. It was cool seeing that she herself is capable of letting just a little bit loose in spite of how kind of authoritarian she is even throughout this particular episode as well also i'm just gonna say this frost giant loki it was awesome to see but i to be honest i'm more interested in how his life would have played out as a frost giant than i am in how thor's life would have played out without loki in it and i think the beat what for me where in my eyes what if just kind of falls down a little bit is its sense of priorities it focuses on what i think are the less interesting aspects of its stories in a lot of areas i mean there's a lot of episodes that do get it just right for example the doctor strange episode but i feel like a lot of their ideas are constantly hijacking one another and i think it's another instance of so many ideas too little time. But that's not something I really hold against it as I feel like they wanted this show to be something light and just a little bit of fun. But then it's just like, why is The Watcher making it sound like it's more than it is in that case? And, and that's kind of just, yeah. But that's just kind of my personal gripes. I did enjoy the episode. I enjoyed lots of the character beats in this one. Um, I'm not entirely convinced by it, but as, as like a piece of just, you know, cartoon, it was enjoyable. It does set up the next episode which I, I kind of find is a little strange that they're doing in this episode, they're setting that up. But the cliffhanger here was Ultron in his vision body, which I think is the idea that right now I'm the most excited about. Like, that sounds awesome. I can't wait for that. I really think Ultron is, like, he's a villain that I seem to like a lot more than a lot of other people do. And the idea that he successfully became the vision and he kind of won, sign me up. So I'm excited for the future of this show. But I just think there's a few bits where this premise could have just used another pass where I think it would have just been a little better in my eyes. I don't think it's bad, and I don't think this episode was bad, but I'm just, I don't know, I'm just not 100% on it. So what do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video and you want to support more like it, be sure to hit that big, beautiful subscribe button. And of course, in the description below are links to different social media feeds, including the Patreon. If you're feeling extra generous like the following people, who are David 20 Covers, JK Strife, Marcus Ward, Serious the Skeptic, Biotin Arts, Mr. SP, Sergio, 
George is Lost, Legendary Ray Ray, Adam Myers, and Fayalan Schwarzentraub. Thank you guys, you are the best of the best, but as for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching guys, and have a great day.